Hey everyone, this is Chris. I'm uh, doing this a little earlier in the morning than normal, so you might see me drinking some coffee today. Uh, but I am trying out another variation on the Three Heroes Secrecy deck that I enjoy so much. Uh, this time, we have uh, swapped out Theodrid for Biffer from the deck that I played last week. So our lineup is Eowyn, Biffer, and Gorfindel. Uh, it gives us a little bit more of a buffer for staying in secrecy, very, very slightly. Uh, but of course, the consequence being that we don't get to play Timely Aid, we don't have Faramir to help us boost up willpower. Uh, but the extra draw and the access to healing and Asphaloth both could be very useful. So we're going to see how it goes. Starting off round one, draw my initial card. Uh, okay, that's a really great one. So, uh, we're going to spend one resource for an Ithilien Lookout, which allows me to scry the top of this deck and know that a three threat is coming off of the top because it is a location. I will honestly just flip that up for myself so I remember. Um, that does probably mean we have to quest with Glorfindel, even though we don't have... I don't have to. Um, Alright, but I'm getting sidetracked. To save this resource on Eowyn, because I have a Bjorning Skin Changer in my hand, and a couple of the bears. Uh, so I guess we're going to use this one, put Resourceful on Glorfindel. Also have Jubair in my hand, so that'll be a big help in the future. And I guess now we're just gonna quest. I'll send seven. Up against seven. <laughs> so no progress is made. Uh, I pretty much have to travel to this watched path because I'm not really willing to reveal an extra encounter card for either of those yet. And there's no enemies, so we're just done. Taking up to 19 threat. Uh, and one thing that I should say that I definitely messed up in the previous video is uh, the Bjorning Skin Changer ability. I'm about to put one into play right now. Is only a combat action. So I can't just pop this immediately for a big bear. Uh, but I don't think that actually worked in my favor in the last video at all. All right, let's move one of these resources to Biffer, much as I would like them to be on Gorfindel, uh, just to get Asphaloth out. Uh, Asphaloth is going to be incredibly useful. I'm going to start putting progress on that Darkwood Grove without having to travel there. Uh, and I don't know what's coming off the top again, but I think if I send eight, uh, we should be fine. All right, Dark Black Woods is currently a two threat location. So that means six, eight, I will clear this, make one progress and possibly discard to add an enemy. But no, I lucked out and got rid of the second Dark Black Woods. Uh, travel for this round. I think we go Dark Black Woods. I can discard a card from my hand uh, because the Skin Changer can pull these bears back out of the discard pile. Tick up now to 20 threat. So, last turn for secrecy effects, unless I draw Elrond's Council. Which I didn't, but that's okay. So we should have one resource, that's not one. One resource on Biffer, one on Eowyn, and now three on Glorfindel. Um, I'm gonna spend one for Heed the Dream right now. I think that would be very useful. Two, three, four, five. Honestly, out of all of these, in order to accelerate, I'm gonna take a second skin changer. Uh, just because having two of these bears would be huge, and also means that I have another good discard target in a moment when I play Darren's runes. All 
So, like I said, visit Darren's runes and draw two cards. I lucked into a third skin changer and an Elrond's Council. Uh, so, we're good now. I forgot last round that I was going to ask Falaf to put two on the Darkwood Grove. Uh, so, let's just say we had done that. Oh my god, I moved to questing. Uh, I'm going to send nine this time with Elrond's Council. Mostly for the threat reduction. I, I don't think the additional willpower is going to be relevant. Uh, but nine versus four versus seven. Uh, but I will ask Falaf to clear this dark black or this dark wood grove uh, before we resolve. So nine up against four is five progress. Makes one on the quest and clears the dark black woods. Uh, at which point we will travel to Watched Path, for sure. And we <laughs> move on to the next round. I, uh, I misplaced my spin down that I was using for counting rounds, so I'm just going to skip it for this video. I hope that doesn't affect anyone too much. Draw my card. Ooh, that's a good one, too. All right, so let's just real quick spend five for Jubair, two for a Bjorning Skin Changer, and we're just going to chill with the rest of it. Uh, so questing six, seven, eight, nine. Must choose either discard one card, so I only have two left, or assign X damage where X out. Oh. I will happily assign two damage among characters I control. I have these perfect skin changers that aren't really doing anything with them. With the hit points, I mean. All right, so I sent nine up against one. Uh, it means we make eight progress. One on watched path with might spawn an enemy, which does spawn an enemy. Uh, and the remaining seven on captured by spiders. Brings us to 9 of 10. Uh, now, I will travel to Spider Den. Um, a zero cost enemy should be pretty easy to deal with with these two. All the really scary ones are one cost in the warg stack. It doesn't even get revealed, so you can't try and surge off of hunting wargs. Oh, sorry, Howling Wargs. This Hunting Warg just cost one. All right, I guess we're, we're going Wolf Rider. That's the one that I might have to engage the soonest. Although actually, uh, just for the sake of getting it out of the staging area, I think I will optionally engage this Wolf Rider. Defend with Jubair and discard the Shadow Effect. And Gorfindel will put a measly one damage on that Wolf Rider. I don't have a target for Asphaloth, so I'm not gonna forget to do that. I'll just ready everyone and move on. Uh, I could have brought in the bears to deal with this wolf rider, but I, I think I would rather have the willpower right now. Ooh, okay. All right, Darren's runes. One, two. Out of all of these, discard one of them. I'm gonna discard dare wine. Uh, we already have Jubair in play. We already have access to two bears. Uh, a beefy defender is great, although I can't use his ability to cancel shadows uh, without Theodrin. Well, that didn't get me any closer to playing anything in my hand, so we're just gonna leave it. Uh, questing for the round, four, six, seven, 
Uh, let's actually just do eight committed to the quest, leaving back this lookout in case I need to. That's dumb. I can just turn skin changers into bears. Send nine to the quest up against three. Up against six is three progress. One on the spider den and two on the main quest, which means that Mendor joins my side and we advance to stage two. A chosen path, one, two, three, four, five. Looking for a card of cost one or less. Any card? Any card. And it is revealed. All right, yeah, so we are picking Hunting Warg uh, because that triggers the Warg's Glade to Surge, which sucks. All right, so here we go, we're surging. Into, uh, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Restless Hunters just takes an enemy back. And then on 2B, the first treachery every round which we were not at yet, uh, gains doomed one and can't be canceled. I can't cancel any of them anyways, uh, so that's fine. All right, at this point, <laughs> travel to the Warg's Glade just to get it out of there. Use Asphaloth to put two progress on it. I can only take one of these enemies since my threat is so low. I might as well just pull this wolf rider back down. Defend with Jupiter. Hunter's Lookout is no shadow, so that ability doesn't even matter. And Warp and Dell can kill the wolf rider. One down. And now at 20 threat, we are back at the critical level for secrecy. Draw my card, generate some resources. All right, so that's a, a real good ally uh, who I could play next round. So let's move a resource over from A1 to Biffer. Uh, next round, I can play Furial. And I'll take this four spirit resources to put a Northern Tracker in play. I also have a feint in my hand, so that might be the easy approach for dealing with the beast. All right, so uh, questing this round. We can't make more than five progress on the quest unless we send Mendor. And I think we're gonna have to fight, uh, although, we explore the Wargs Glade now, uh, there aren't actually any Wargs to get back. So let's just make sure we do that. I'll send six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, let's send Mendor. Uh, 10, 11, up against five in the staging area. All right, Howling Warg. Uh, we're going to check and see if it surges. It doesn't because of this Warg's Glade. That text is only active in the staging area. So if this card is a Warg, we reveal it. But it's not. All right, so lots of Wargs. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, up against six is five progress. Uh, so I'll use Asphaloth to put two on here before we do that. So we end up with one on the Warg's Glade and four on the main quest. Uh, and as I just <laughs> saw, there aren't any Wargs. Oh, encounter deck and discard pile. Never mind. Let's go get a Warg. Uh, Howling Warg is a good one. Necromancer's Warg, we would have to fight. Any non-unique Warg? Any non-unique Warg. Uh, we're gonna get another hunting Warg because that effect is nasty, and two threat is basically as big as they come. All right, 
And this round at 20 threat versus uh, a bunch of wolves. I think I'm going to engage the beast. Who does get a shadow. I'm going to preemptively turn two skin changers into giant bears. Who thankfully come in ready so that I can use them to fight immediately. Uh, and this will give me more than enough to deal with the beast. So we'll defend with your bear, discard the shadow effect to ignore that damage swapping ability. So he takes no damage. Uh, and I have 10 attack from allies, which is enough to kill the beast. And so we tick up to 21 threats. I'm gonna pay the full price for all of my secrecy cards now. Although at this point, that's not too bad. Oof, this is a tricky one. Uh, I'm gonna use one from Gorfindel to add a resource to Biffer. Spent two from Eowyn for third skin changer, and five from Biffer for Furial. Uh, the reason I moved the resource is because I don't have anything to spend uh, spirit resources on right now, but I do have a Warden of Healing in hand that I would like to be able to play next round and possibly still slide resources over. So committing to the quest, uh, this time I think I can make a good bit of progress, although I lost two willpower. Uh, four, five, six, seven, ten, and raise my threat by one. Uh, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, yeah, sixteen, seventeen. All right, seventeen up against five. Reveal the dry water course. Uh, so that would be 17 up against 7, making exactly 10 progress. Might as well put 2 on this dry water course immediately. Uh, and I don't even have to travel to it because I can just kill it with Asphalaf. Uh, I will optionally engage this Howling Warg. Defend with Jubair, discarding this annoying Wild Warg shadow effect, uh, and just crushing this wolf with bears. Brings me to 23 threat. Draw a card for the round. There's a resourceful that we're probably not going to play. We could, but I don't think it's necessary. I'll spend two for the Warden of Healing that I mentioned before. I mean, at this point, I have Faint and Resourceful in my hand, so we're just going to leave it. Uh, this round, questing. Only to make five progress. Six progress, technically. Uh, so let's send six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is it going to be up against four? Uh, twelve against. Uh, do I want this howling war? Uh, yes, that's fine. So twelve against currently seven. Uh, I have to discard this. This is not a warg. I can Asphaloth to clear the water course without traveling. And so 12 up against 5 is 7 progress. It's enough to get me past Lost in the Dark. And now we are on the trail, searching the top 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for a card of cost 2 or less to reveal. All right, well, this Goblin's Caves is cost two. 
but it's also pretty irrelevant. It's it's like the Warg location, except there's... Actually, no, there are some nasty goblins in here, aren't there? Yeah, let's take goblins, try and swarm out some extra enemies. I know we have the, the Beastmaster, and I know we have the Wolf Rider, so there's some possibilities here. And we're on to 3B, the Elven King's Halls, where we <laughs> might surge if we make more than 10 progress, uh, and we need to make enough progress equal to our threat, which we basically can't reduce anymore. Uh, so at this point, I will travel to the Goblin's Caves. I have no reason not to. I will optionally engage a Hunting Warg. I am forced to engage a Howling Warg. A uh, Hunting Warg makes an attack in the engagement step. Uh, so I'll defend with Jubair and discard this shadow card. That would have been an orc. Uh, but he takes no damage from that attack, which is good. Now we move into the combat step. Uh, things get a little more dicey, but should still be fine. I'll have the skin changer defend his hunting warg. Two damage there. I'll take Northern Tracker to defend the Howling Warg. If the attack is undefended, it is definitely not. Uh, no damage there. And now we get to fight back. Uh, four is enough to kill a Howling Warg. And seven is enough to kill a Hunting Warg. And I might as well Warden of Healing to remove one of this damage. And let's go. At this point, I think we've seen all the worst. Uh, we never got Light of Valinor, which is unfortunate. I mean, like, what what is going to happen now that would really wreck us? Um, I mean, we don't have Faramir to, to really make a lot of progress. Well, we do have Asphaloth and the Northern Trackers to clear locations very quickly. We have Jubair and the Giant Bears to help us deal with enemy attacks. Let's just see. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, seventeen, eighteen, up against two. Uh, we can keep that. All right, 18 up against four is 14 progress. I'm gonna use Asphaloth to put two on the dry water course. And so we're just gonna make 14, which is five on the goblin caves and nine on the main quest. Which means I do not surge an extra card, although I do have to get an orc enemy and put it into play. which at this point is going to be Dogglder Beastmaster because he comes with a warg just to keep things rolling. Uh, but I probably never actually have to engage him. I don't want to travel to dry water course. Mm, I don't even really want to engage this hunting warg. So I think I just won't. Uh, Warden of Healing clears off one of these, and then we refresh. Draw my card, generate some more resources. I mean, at this point, I might as well play Resourceful, just for fun. I have two feints in my hand, that's, that's all we got. All right, so. Questing, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, and the two northern tractors clear this dry water course. So 18 up against 4. Uh, I can ignore this card if I want. Uh, I mean, well, that's just going to surge regardless, so no choice there. Howling wargs. Is this a warg? It is a warg. All right. Uh, so 18 up against 7 is 11 progress. No location, so that just brings me straight up to 20 out of 20, six on the main quest. Uh, and that is more than 10 progress, so we reveal a dark black woods, which is perfect because I can put two progress on dark black woods now. And even though it is a two threat location, uh, I don't care. Just don't. Uh, so we have to deal with both of these wards this round. Deal one damage to a character I control. How terrible. And we deal out some shadow cards. Uh, both of these enemies are pretty non-threatening. Uh, ideally, I will defend both attacks. Uh, so Jubair can defend the Howling Warg. Discard an attachment would have been nothing. Uh, and I'll have a giant bear defend the Necromancer's Warg. No shadow effect there either. Uh, Warden of Healing can clear this one damage. And my other giant bear can... Which of these is worse? Honestly, they're both basically the same. Uh, but... Doggo the Beastmaster might just bring this one back. So, ticking up to 27 threat. I know that committing Glorfindel is sort of slowing down progress slightly by raising my threat, uh, but his three willpower should more than counteract that. Draw my card for the round. Well, I'll, I'll spend two for a <laughs> kind of superfluous Warden of Healing. Still just got double faint. All right, so we're going to quest again, raising my threat to 28 by sending Glorfindel. Uh, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to clear the Dark Black Woods. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18... Uh, just to be sure, 1920. And I can discard this first card if I don't want to deal with it. So 20 up against 4. Uh, yes, I will discard that because it's going to surge. 20 up against 6 is 14 progress. Uh, brings me to 34 out of the 28 that I need. And that is another successful vaguely secrecy run of uh, Woodland Realm against this Wargs deck. Uh, sort of really shows you the, the power of being able to cheat in allies without having to pay for them. I know we didn't do too much of that, uh, but these giant bears are really phenomenal when you only pay two resources for them. We got to see some discard shenanigans because it didn't matter for those cards. I will say that without Theodred, the deck feels very slow. Um, and it, it still sort of stalled out on card draw in exactly the same way because so much space is dedicated to uh, taking advantage of secrecy and ramping out these allies. And there's ways around that, but the deck is so effective that I feel like it's probably fine. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.